It is a great pleasure for me to provide some reflections at the outset of the Helsinki Chemicals Forum. I regret very much that I am not able to be with you in person today in Helsinki and therefore appreciate very much the opportunity to send this video message. My presentation today is entitled Reflecting on the Future of Chemicals Management and Sustainable Chemistry a message from the United Nations Environment Assembly. I will structure my contribution in three parts. First, I will refer to the chemicals and waste discussions at UNI2, which is in full swing as I'm speaking to you today. Part two will reflect on some of the key issues and trends in the chemicals production and consumption system. I will conclude by discussing opportunities and challenges as we develop the future of international chemicals management under the strategic approach to international chemicals management, also referred to as SICAM. For those not familiar with international environmental governance, a few words up front about UNEA. Since the Rio Summit in 2012 on Sustainable Development, UNEP is governed by the United Nations Environment Assembly, which in contrast to the former UNEP Governing Council, has universal membership of more than 190 countries and it provides global policy guidance on, on all environmental matters. UNEA 2 is taking place this week from 23 to 27 May 2016. The first major theme of UNEA 2 is delivering on the environmental dimension of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. As you may recall, the 2030 Agenda was adapted by the United Nations General Assembly in September 2016, including 17 important Sustainable Development Goals, also referred to as SDGs. These goals represent a paradigm change in development. They integrate environmental, economic and social dimensions into one single development agenda. Equally important, they are universal, which means they will guide all UN member states, not only developing countries. The time is over where environment was addressed as a silo. Here we see the 17 SDGs. They range from Goal 1 on Zero Hunger to Goal 17 on Effective Partnerships for Implementation. Chemicals and Waste is a specific target under SDG 12 on sustainable consumption and production. It is also referred to under SDG 3 on good health and well-being and SDG 6 on clean water and sanitation. However, given the importance of chemicals for development, there is probably not one single SDG which does not depend on or relate to the sound management of chemicals. The second important theme of UNEA 2 is the topic of healthy environment, healthy people. This week UNEP released a flagship report on this particular issue which will be discussed at the UNEA 2 Ministerial Policy Review Session on 26 May. Based on available scientific information, the report presents evidence of the linkages between environmental quality and human health and well-being and points to the broader drivers of these linkages. Just one example on some of the data featured in the report. In 2012 alone, 12.6 million deaths were attributable to environmental degradation, representing 23 of all deaths globally. The report acknowledges that chemicals are important for development and responsible for advances in health. However, it stresses that certain types of chemicals, such as persistent organic pollutants, endocrine disrupting chemicals and heavy metals, such as mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, can build up to dangerous levels in human and wildlife, causing adverse reproductive, developmental, immunological, hormonal and carcinogenic effects. To address these problems, the report emphasizes the need of decarbonizing our economies, detoxifying our societies, changing our lifestyles and enhancing the resilience of our ecosystems. The situation in developing countries is a particular concern and I would like to provide the e-waste problem as an example. 
a total of 42 million metric tons of waste are generated every year, reducing significant amounts of chemicals through e-waste. A majority of this waste ends up in developing countries. Here we see an electronic waste dump in Africa where workers and often children are exposed to toxic substances and fumes. UNEA2 is also in the process of adopting a resolution on chemicals and waste. The draft resolution discussed this week is emphasizing the implementation of existing international agreements rather than the development of new chemicals and waste conventions. Specific attention is being given, for example, to the ratification and implementation of the Minata, Minamata Convention on Mercury and the implementation of decisions taken at ICCM4, the fourth international conference on chemical management, which was held in September 2015 under SICAM. For those of you not familiar with SICAM, it is a policy framework to promote chemical safety around the world that is distinguished by its multi-stakeholder and multi-sectoral character. SICAM's overall objective follows the goal set by the World Summit on Sustainable Development in 2020 to achieve the sound management of chemicals throughout their life cycle. I'm now going to move to the challenge of addressing chemicals management in the long term beyond 2020. All of us engaged in this topic over the past 20 to 30 years have seen a lot of progress, in particular through legally binding conventions at the global level. Here we see some of the major international chemicals and waste conventions which UNEP catalyzed. While a lot of progress has been achieved, conventions take a long time to negotiate and focus on a limited number of chemicals. The five conventions that are well known to everybody are the Montreal Protocol, the Stockholm, Basel and Rotterdam Convention and the Minamata Convention on Mercury. Yet, we are starting to understand that there's a lot of unfinished business and that we are unlikely to fully achieve the 2020 goal. Given this realization, SICAM has started to examine international chemicals and waste management in the long term beyond 2020. I would like to share with you four issues or trends that we consider of importance in developing a future approach. Some of them were informed by a recently published book on the future of chemicals uh, industry by 2050 by Rafael Cariela. During the next decades, we are likely to witness a major economic and social transformation. The global GDP is expected to quadruple from 2010 to 2050. This is an estimated GDP of 280 trillion per year. Average life expectancy will increase from 67 years in 2010 to 75 years by 2050. And the chemical industry is expected to quadruple also and grow from 3.1 trillion to 14.9 trillion by 2050. China and India will not only become the world's largest economies but also become the largest chemical and pharmaceutical markets. A major question is here if with this massive growth in chemical production, if we can move to a circular economy or if growing amounts of chemicals will be released into the environment and increase exposure to humans and the wildlife. I'm therefore very much looking forward to the outcomes of your discussion on the circular economy at this forum. As the world population is growing to 9 billion and economies are growing, we are likely to see a growing middle class. And we know that middle classes are likely to create high demand for consumer products such as electronics, cosmetics, household pesticides and so on. In many developed countries, it is the middle classes who demand safer and cleaner products. Thus, labeling and certification schemes have often worked well to inform consumer choices. An important question here is if the same logic that, that worked in developed countries applies in the new emerging economies. A related factor is urbanization. 
The movement of people from rural to urban settings produces a net increase in households, increasing demand for chemicals related to building materials, cars and consumer products. I thus welcome very much that the topic of chemicals in the construction sector is discussed at this forum. While in the past G7 countries ranked first in chemical production and sales, China now dominates the world ranking. Other countries like India are likely to move up in the hierarchy. In 2015, China's sales levels of chemicals were as high as the next six countries combined, as much as the NAFTA and EU markets put together. In a world market three to four times bigger than in 2010, it is likely also that large multinational companies will become very, very large in size. Let's look at the recent takeover bid uh, of Bayer for Monsanto. Should there be a deal, it could be valued at more than 42 billion, which is Monsanto's current market capitalization. And the combination of these two companies would sell about 28% of the world's pesticides, according to Morgan Stanley estimates. Equally relevant, mergers and acquisitions are becoming global, as illustrated by the recent uh, takeover by ChemChina of Syngenta, worth also 43 billion. The key question here is, how do these mergers affect the sustainable management of chemicals? Are we likely to see a race to the top or alignment with the weaker management approaches and systems? An important unknown variable are small and medium-sized enterprises. In many developing countries, it is in particular this sector which faces major chemical management challenges. In recent years, many developed countries have taken steps to strengthen their chemicals legislation. The implementation of REACH, for example, created a paradigm shift in generating chemical hazard data for many chemicals formerly not tested. And recent efforts in the United States to reform the outdated Toxic Substances Control Act are advancing. Equally, some countries with emerging economies such as Brazil, Colombia or China have taken or are taking important steps to develop a regulatory scheme for industrial chemicals. These efforts must be applauded. The development of free trade agreements such as TTIP, the ASEAN Free Trade Area, AFTA, provide an opportunity to harmonize the classification and, ideally, risk management of chemicals. Here, it would be important that high standards are maintained. As the world is becoming more global, in the long term, chemicals considered unsafe for human health or the environment in one part of the world should not be considered safe in another. This is an ethical question and double standards need to be avoided. Your discussion at the Helsinki Forum on perfluorinated chemicals is right on target in addressing some of these questions. In particular, when you're discussing the shift of production from developed to developing countries. Yet, many developing countries are lacking behind in developing a basic regulatory system and basic chemical safety standards. In this slide, we see, for example, that only a fraction of countries has implemented the UN Globally Harmonized System of Classification, Labeling and Packaging of Chemicals, which was adopted in 2002. The blue shaded countries, many of them are located in developing countries, have not implemented the GHS, and in particular Africa is a concern. Major efforts are thus needed to scale up development of basic capacity in countries around the world to manage chemicals. Some of you who have participated in international conferences have witnessed that it is in particular through side events that uh, space is created to share innovative and inspirational ideas. Allow me therefore to say a few words about some of the issues which are being discussed this week at INEA 2 in side events. One side event will deal with the question of sustainable chemistry in an SDG context. Given the potential to contribute to future chemical management, as well as to catalyze transformative change in the chemical industry, the concept of sustainable chemistry is gaining momentum at the international level. 
sustainable chemistry seeks to advance development of new molecules that are greener and benign and also to have more efficient production processes. And it seeks to address at the same time all three dimensions of sustainable development, i.e. economic, social and environmental considerations. It is therefore fully compatible with and fully relevant to the 2030 development agenda. During UNIR 2, governments are exploring pouring, if sustainable chemistry is a concept which is ready for discussion at the global level through possible engagement of UNEP and other intergovernmental organizations. The second topic is climate change and chemicals. Here, a side event seeks to create linkages among two of the most important agendas of the 21st century, addressing climate change and achieving sound management of chemicals and waste. The climate change challenge is both a challenge and an opportunity for the chemical industry. In the area of mitigation, opportunities exist to reduce the carbon footprint of the chemicals industry, which we all know is very energy intensive, for example, through renewable feedstocks. The chemical industry also holds the key to develop many of the new technologies which are required to decarbonize our economy. The climate change adaptation and chemicals and waste linkage is equally important. Just imagine if a chemical storage site or waste dump are flooded by extreme weather events. Thus, national adaptation plans that do not consider chemicals and waste issues are likely to be flawed. The third issue I want to briefly touch upon is lead in paint and batteries. Here, a side event will raise awareness about the opportunity to phase out lead in paint uh, and thus promote collective efforts to control it worldwide by the year 2020. So it is a very concrete example to implement the 2020 goal. The lead in paint case, though, generates interesting questions and lessons learned. We already knew about the toxic effects of lead, in particular on children, for many decades, and the cost-benefit calculations are straightforward. Yet, we have not achieved acceptable levels of risk reduction globally, despite many years of knowing about the problems. Finally, the topics of human rights and chemicals and waste is discussed in the side event. Here, the special rapporteur on um, human rights and hazardous products will examine the impact of chemicals and the related human rights implications on child toxic exposure to hazardous substances, including toxic chemicals and waste. And the event looks at strengthening linkages between human rights, health and environmental communities. In the future, we are likely to see much more of the invocation of human rights in addressing chemicals issues in environmental injustice. The recent case of fatal deaths associated with PHMG, which was highlighted by the Special Rapporteur in his report from South Korea, is a case in point. The period of 2015 to 2018 creates an important window of opportunity to design a new international approach for chemicals and waste management beyond 2020. As you may know, ICCM4 initiated an international process to look at SICAM and chemicals management beyond 2020, with a major open-ended meeting taking place in 2018 to address this question. So, what are the, some of the trends and the key challenges that we need to keep in mind in developing a beyond 2020 approach for the sound management of chemicals and waste? I've mentioned a few of the issues we are looking at, but as a more in-depth, specific contribution to these international efforts, UNEP has recently initiated work on the Global Chemicals Outlook 2, which has the intention to feed scientific knowledge into the intersessional process under SICAM in order to support the implementation of considerations for beyond 2020. Key questions addressed by GCO2 include, for example, the following. What are lessons learned and how can we scale up commitment to develop basic chemical management systems in our countries? How can we scale up research and innovation to accelerate progress to replace unsustainable chemicals with greener and sustainable chemicals? And what are the incentive systems that need to be put in place to accelerate the good and slow down or eliminate the bad? 
in thinking beyond 2020, public financing will certainly not be sufficient to support the development of basic regular capacity in developing countries. We thus hope that industry can scale up its efforts and contributions in these areas. Here, we see also an opportunity to engage more with downstream industry, which is a major user of uh, chemicals, such as the textile and the tire manufacturer sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many analysts who say that we are entering into a new industrial revolution. And that the most significant innovation, though, in the chemical industry happened in the first half of the last century. Now, with resource and energy scarcity, toxicity issues, and climate change upon us, the chemical industry has an opportunity to go back to its roots, innovation and technology. Specific action to address the legacy of the past that needs to be complemented with innovation, incentive schemes, and new business models that can help transform the system to create a future chemistry which is fundamentally compatible with the environmental, social, and economic dimensions of sustainable development. UNEP is inviting all of you to engage with us in partnerships to turn a vision of a chemical safe future into reality. We invite for partnerships to support the intersessional process under SICAM, to support the development or engagement in Global Chemicals Outlook 2, and support capacity development in developing countries. But most of all, we encourage all key players to lead by example. I thank you very much for your attention and wish you a successful deliberation over the coming days.